brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to the Daily Smith Figure Swat Devotional Podcast. My name is Victoria Eok, I'm your host for this podcast. Thank you so, so much for taking from your time to join us today and to listen to this today. I really thank you. And without further delay, let us start with prayer. Father, Lord, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, we thank you so much. You are so good, love. Father, we, you you are so faithful. We thank you for your goodness and for your faithfulness. We thank you because you want to teach us your word. Holy Spirit, we surrender to you right now that this word that we are listening to, that this word may be seed, that this word will represent seeds in our hearts that are sown, and that, Lord, we receive we choose to receive your word in faith so that it will bear fruit in us. We don't want just to be listeners, but we want to be doers of your word. And we want to live as we believe that your word is true. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. The title of today's teaching is Your Part in the Body, Your Part in the Body. So we are going to read from our Bibles and we will read specifically today we are going to read as usual from the New King James Version and we are going to read Ephesians chapter 3 verse 6 and 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 12 to verse 27. So we start with Ephesians chapter 3 verse 6, uh, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. Now we will read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 12 to verse 27. 12 to 27. For as the body is one and has members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact the body is not one member but many. If the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them in the body just as he pleased, and if there were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body, and the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you, no matter, no, much rather, sorry, those members of the body which seem weaker and necessary, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on those we bestow greater honor, on those we bestow greater honor, and our unpresentable parts have greater modesty, but our presentable parts have no need, but God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we are the body of Christ. The Gentiles, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 6, the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. So the first thing that we're going to talk about here today is Paul's revelation. Paul's revelation. Because Paul received a revelation. When you read throughout the New Testament, you see that there's a general idea that Paul is bringing out time and again. A general idea that Paul is bringing out time bringing out or bringing up time and again and this is the concept this is the idea the revelation of paul it was revealed to paul you know that the son of god the very embodiment of the nature of the most high the very incarnation of, of his presence and power could fill a human vessel to its utmost capacity until his very nature was swept through by the power of god this is the revelation that paul received and in other terms we call we call that the new man, meaning that when you came to Christ, when you were recreated in the image of Christ, your spirit was completely transformed into this perfect image of Jesus. Your spirit, I'm not talking about your soul because your actions may not reflect it. Perhaps because you have not done the transformation by the renewal of your mind, 
which is to be done for your soul to reflect what is in your spirit and then for your spirit to have perfect, if I can say so, control over your soul and your body so that your actions will now reflect what is there in your spirit. But in your spirit, you've been recreated exactly in the image of Jesus and Jesus lives in you. Jesus, the perfect one, the holy one lives in you and he could not live in you if he had not made you holy because without holiness, no one will see God. So he first made the vessel holy so that now he could live in you. So he made your spirit holy so that he could live in you. So you are filled with him. He lives in you. So this is the revelation that Paul received. And through this revelation, we know that we are new men, brand new species, new creation, as we said previously. And this is like a new you. It is not the you that was before. It is not who you were before. It is a new creation made in the image and the likeness of Jesus Christ. It means new character, new attitude, uh, self-control, love. You know the fruits of the Holy Spirit, right? And it means that even those things that you thought were impossible from the human viewpoint, you know, you're capable of doing them. Like, you know, stories of people who persecuted others and then this, pe this persecuted people still forgave, you know, and were surprised. Like, how did he take that? Like, the first time that I read Stephen's story in the New Testament of how the stone him and how he was dying and he said kind of the same words as Jesus like forgive them I was like what like how does he do that like I wouldn't be happy about that you know because from a human perspective it's impossible to forgive people who hurt you from a human perspective especially to a certain degree there's some things that when they don't matter to you whether people do that or not you can forgive easily but when it really matters it becomes hard right and this is what this is what this is what we see through the Bible, the fact that the, the old man, the old man not created in the image of Jesus, there are certain things that you cannot do no matter how hard you try. But the new man, when you already know who you are in Christ Jesus, you know that the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. So it's already in you, the ability to forgive, the impossible to forgive, you know, it's already in you. So you just say, oh, Jesus is in me. So this, his forgiveness just flows through me and I believe him and I forgive because it's not you, it's not your ability, it's him who made it possible. So I just give an example with forgiveness, but I think you can understand for all the rest, authority over sin, authority over sickness and disease, you just know that he, he put that in you, he is in you, so you can do it because he can do it, because it's no longer you who lives, it is Christ who lives in you. So this is the new mind. Another thing to know is that everything in God is enlargement, you can measure it, his power is limitless. So we should not try to limit God and say, no, God can't walk through me this way or that way, or God cannot do this or God cannot do that. No, what's impossible to God? Is anything too difficult for him? He said in his order, is anything too difficult for him? And nothing is too difficult for God. So God does not want us to put him in a box or to try to measure what he's able to do and not able to do, but he wants us to trust. He said, if you believe, all things are possible to the one who believes, because nothing is impossible for God. You understand what I mean? So we should not try to measure God, but we should instead trust Him, and we should instead believe that whatever the case, no matter how hard, no matter how complicated it looks like, He can do it. And to come back to the theory and the revelation of the new moon, I want us all to understand that we are not separated from Him. As the Bible says, not separate what God has joined together you who is he who belongs to the lord is one with him so we we belong to him we are one with him we are united he lives in you he lives in me if you are a believer he lives in you if i'm a believer and i'm a believer he lives in me so you we are not so separate we are not separated from him we are always with him if you want to say that god is with you and he's with you and he's in you you can say god lives in me and it's true and you can also say i'm seated with christ in heavenly places and it's also true so wherever he is whether you're talking about heaven or on earth he is wherever you are and there in heaven where he's seated you are seated together with him so you should never separate it like always see never see it as i'm facing this alone you're never facing it alone if you're a christian you, it's you and god something can look bigger than you but it can never be bigger than you and god because your god is obviously bigger than that so and we have to realize that even if we're talking about eternity in eternity you will go where your spirit is like aka 
with God if your spirit has been recreated in the image of Jesus or to hell if you have not surrendered your life to Christ. If your spirit is not like the spirit... Um, if your spirit has not been recreated in the image of Jesus, you cannot enter heaven. So that's what it's about, being born again. So I will conclude with this quote by Smith because what? You might measure your land, you might measure your harvest, but you cannot measure the purposes of the spirit life. They are boundless, they are infinite. You might measure your land, you might measure your harvest, but you cannot measure the purposes of the spirit life. They are boundless, they are infinite. Let us pray. Thank you so much, Lord. Father, Lord, God Almighty, we thank you so much for showing to us the difference between the old man and the new man. We thank you for revealing to us, Lord, that we are new creations in Christ Jesus. That all things have passed away, all things are new, and all things are possible to us because we believe in you and because Christ lives in us. So whether we had, wherever we had limitations, wherever we had block, blocked minds and stuff, Lord, we set ourselves free right now in Jesus' name and we choose to believe that nothing is impossible for God. So nothing is impossible for us because we believe in God. We thank you so much for this revelation in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So thank you so much for joining us today and for listening from start to finish. Thank you for listening from the beginning to the end of this podcast episode. We, you know, we have one new podcast episode every single day by the grace of the Lord. So make sure to subscribe and tune in tomorrow by God's grace to listen to the next podcast episode. If you have prayer requests or questions or anything you need to discuss concerning the Bible or this podcast episode or any other podcast episode or the Smith Figures World Devotional in general or the Bible in general or any sin uh, which you are addicted to for which you need deliverance or healing if you need prayer for sickness and disease if you need healing even in terms of your finances if you need prayer you can always contact me on Instagram Dr. Victoria E. York. you can contact me on Instagram with your prayer requests with your questions with your like anything that you need which is concerning the Bible by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit we're gonna solve it